Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Laura McD Lori McDowell, and she is a mindset coach. She is a speaker, and she is an author, and she is here today to share some valuable information to sh teach us about mindset and about how not to get stuck in life and how to move forward and make your dreams a reality. So, Lori, this is very exciting. I'm very excited to have you on the show Tell us a little about yourself and what you do. Yeah, hi, Stacy. Well, nice to meet you, and I'm really happy to be here. So I am, as I said, I like to call myself the reinvention coach. And I, I'm a coach, a speaker, and an author, and I really help people reinvent themselves. So if they're if you're not a hundred percent satisfied where you are today, if you always thought you could have something different, I like to help you realize that it's all within your grasp and you can reinvent yourself. So I'm actually a chemical engineer by trade. I worked in chemical in the chemical engineering industry for over 30 years. And about two years ago, decided I wanted to do something different. And I started interviewing people and, and wrote the book. And I have a whole new life now. Mm -hmm. So what really brought you to this passion of, of wanting to help people, you know, change their mindset and, and change the way they think and, and help people realize that life doesn't have to be, if something happens, we don't have to just fall and accept it, that we can actually get up and really accomplish our dreams and, and move forward in life. Sure. Yeah. What, what happened, what really started me on this journey was about when I was fired, um, about a year and a half ago, I was fired from a job in a pretty hor horrible fashion. I had worked in the job for 11 years and I, I was a high performer and I was doing great. And I, I didn't like my new boss. He had only been there about a year. We had difference of opinions, but that happens. I didn't think anything of it. And I drove four hours to a two day meeting. And when I went to check into the hotel, they told me my room was canceled. And then when I met with my boss, they told me you're fired. We'll pay you till the end of the day, turn around and go home. Wow. So needless, yeah. Four hour drive home. It's probably closer to five hours because it was now rush hour. And, you know, the first half of that drive was crazy. I was my, I was angry. I was scared. I was upset. I didn't know what I was going to do. How am I going to make money? How could they have done this to me? I was embarrassed. And then about halfway home, the thought popped into my head that I don't have to go to work tomorrow. And when I got that thought, it was like, I don't have to go to work tomorrow. And I realized that I wasn't fulfilled in that job. I wasn't happy and that I was going to figure out rather than just get another job or do the same, I wanted to be in charge of my happiness and my career. So I said, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do. So that's really what started me. I started, decided I always wanted to write a book. So I said, I'm going to write a book. And in writing the book, I thought about people who inspired me. And they were they were people like you, Stacey, who had something happen and they reinvented themselves. One woman who is featured in my book was diagnosed with um, MS and autoimmune disorders when she was like in her 30s and was in a wheelchair. And the doctors told her, you know, she might never walk again. And she didn't listen. She decided she wasn't going to take that. And she studied nutrition and holistic health and and really made herself a guinea pig and then she now she would never know she was ever sick and she yeah. decided to start a nonprofit to help other people with similar autoimmune disorders and people yeah. like that inspired me and I and I wanted to learn what it is that enable people to just reinvent themselves so that I could share that with all those other people who are aren't and they get stuck and they can't get over it right now, how are some of the things that you, or over the course of your time doing this, what are some of the ways that you feel are really valuable when someone wants to reinvent themselves? Um, what are some of the things that they can do to get them on their way? Because a lot of times people are fearful of change. They, you know, they don't know what to expect. They don't know if they're going to fail, but, you know, but they don't like where their life is going. They're not happy. You know, what are some of the things that they could do? Yeah, I think the first thing that you really need to do is I call it the process of discovery. And you need to look at yourself and, and really deeply look at yourself. And you need to look at your, you know, whys first. You know, why why are you doing what you want to do and, and what do you really want to do and why? 
Right. And then you need to look at, you know, what success means to you, because some people feel like they're successful or they should be successful. You know, they've got a good job, a house, a nice car, 2.5 kids and a good <laughs> salary. <laughs> and on paper, it's like, oh, I should be happy. I have everything. But they're not successful because they're trying to live someone else's idea of success. Yeah. So then you need to really explore and discover what success means to you. And then even more important, you need to, once you know where your why and where you want to go and what success means, you need to look at what's holding you back, whether right. it's limiting decisions, whether it's your fears, whether it's the people, you know, other people's expectations or your obligations. You need, the first step is really figuring out what, you know, what, what you want and what's keeping you from do that, doing yeah. that. And then once you've got that, you can move on to an, you know, to the next step and start the process. But knowing yourself is really important to begin with. Right. Now, are there some ways that you could start to learn your, who you really are as a person? Because a lot of people sometimes go through life and they're like, what is my purpose? Why am I here? You know, what are my true passions? You know, what was I meant to do in this life? Because I just don't feel fulfilled. You know, is journaling maybe one good way of, of figuring out who you are? Like, do you have some ways that you could share? Yes. Yeah. Journaling is definitely a great way. And and what I, I like to do, I like to combine meditations with journaling. Mm -hmm. So I find a meditation that I like, you know, something that speaks to me and you can find them. Um, you know, I can help suggest them. They're all over, but I have some that I really love. Yeah. And after you do that, you know, you, in that meditation, you kind of think about yourself and you learn stuff. And then what's really powerful is when you're done with the meditation, to actually journal and write down what came to you during that meditation. And that's a really good way to explore. And there are other things we can do. Like I have a, I have a quiz, which is almost ready. It's a free gift I'll give out. And hopefully I will, I can give you the link and, and, and it'll be ready in a couple of weeks later, but it's called the, um, the success saboteurs quiz. Mm -hmm. And it kind of tells you a little bit about what's, you know, you answer some questions and it tells you what, what are the things that might be sabotaging you? What is yeah. it? Sometimes it, you know, it might be that you're, you're stuck with fears or you, you want to do it alone or, you know, there are certain things. So that's another way, but meditating, journaling is really good. Um, and there are some other exercises you can do. Um, one I exercise I like that talks about fears is you look, you think about some of the things you worry about, what are the worst things that could happen? And you write that down. And then after you write it down, you kind of look at, okay, like what's the probability that this really going to happen and how many different things have to happen for that worst one. And once you go through that process, sometimes you realize that you're worrying about something that is so unlikely to ever happen that, you know, right. everything would have to align just perfect for this worst case. And you're wasting your time worrying about it. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Now, when you go, when you start to help people and you start to see progress and you start to, you know, they're starting to meditate, they're starting to journal. Um, do you also suggest any type of, um, you know, verbal ways of, of, you know, maybe exercise and communication with a coach or um, different ways of, of helping, you know, someone, you know, be able to grow in their own two shoes and so yeah. to speak? Yeah, well, I, I I personally think everyone should have a coach. I have about four of them, mm -hmm. coaches for different parts of my life. But yeah. coaching, you know, and, and it doesn't have to be, um, you know, a specific type of coach. Find someone that you really can connect with, that you're comfortable telling, because you want to be able to share your deepest, darkest, you know, anything you're worried about, you want to be able to share that with a coach. And, and when you're looking for a coach, Find someone who you feel comfortable with. Don't be afraid to interview them. And if, you, if you're if you talking to someone and it doesn't work, ask them who they recommend or who their coaches are. Right. So I think coaching is very important. The other thing, you know, from a language point of view is, is how you talk to yourself makes all the difference. We Sometimes we talk to ourselves in ways we would never talk to someone else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we tell ourselves and, and our brain, you know, a lot of what I've studied in the coaching has to do with your unconscious mind and your unconscious mind doesn't hear, doesn't really pay attention to, you know, pronouns and adjectives and ver it really focuses on nouns. So like, if I tell you, you know, Stacy, don't think of a purple elephant before you can not think of a purple elephant, you have to see that purple elephant. And then yeah. that, your, your unconscious mind sees the purple elephant. 
So when we talk to ourselves, you know, and we say, oh, God, I'm so stupid, or, oh, I don't want to be stupid, our brain just hears stupid, 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 and it's thinking, okay, this person's stupid. So mm -hmm. the way you talk to yourself and the way you talk is just, you know, always talk in the positive or the toward where you want to go. So never say, you know, never say, I don't want to be, I don't want to be poor. I don't want to be, you know, overweight. Say, I want to be thin. I want to be beautiful. I want to live an abundant lifestyle. So always talk to yourself in the, and even to other people yeah. in the way that takes you where you want to go, because that way your brain starts hearing it and it'll, it'll, it'll start believing it. Your subconscious mind, your unconscious hears those words yeah, and focuses on them. So if you're always putting yourself down or telling yourself bad things, or even saying, you know, as opposed to what you want, what you don't want, your brain's not going to recognize what you do want. Right. Right. That's so true. That That is so true. You know, how we word things to ourselves, I think means a lot, you know, like instead of saying can't say can't, you know, instead mm -hmm. of saying should it say should. should you know? it, yeah. Yeah. And even I know a lot, couple of other ones I really like is, you know, instead you never say I have to, because really we don't have to do anything. There's right. nothing we have to do. That's true. I mean, you know, there's consequences. If we don't eat, we'll probably eventually die, but we don't yeah. have to eat. <laughs> but, but, you know, you get to say what I, what I get to do or what I want to do. Cause if you get to do it, it's, it just gives it a, so much more positive conversation. And, and mm -hmm. I've tried to take the word, but out of my vocabulary and out of my, even my writing. And instead of, but I always say, and so that's yeah. another, you know, language is really, the language we use really changes what our, what happens on the inside and how our brain sees things. Right. Seems like you incorporate a lot of positive thinking into your ways of coaching. Yes, definitely. And, and I feel like if you don't, you know, you need to, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, someone I gave a talk a couple weeks ago and about how you can reinvent your own reality. And I had a question, someone asked me, isn't that being delusional? And it's like, no, it's not. Cause I'm not no. saying, you, you can reinvent your reality. Granted, yeah. some things you may, maybe you, you know, I, everyone can't say, I mean, someone who's 90 year old, 90 year, years old can't say, I want to be, you know, a professional athlete necessarily, because right. it's not practical. Yeah. But within, you know, if you're trying to do something that's really feasible and practical and something that it's a stretch, you can do it. If you, you can, you know, you're, the way you think your yeah. positive thoughts are really, projected on other people and they see them that way. So if you think you're really, you know, oh, I know what I'm doing and I'm really intelligent and I can share this, then other people are going to see you that way. Yeah. And they're going to treat you that way. Whereas if you think, oh, I'm awful, I'm a horrible person, no one would want to be around me, then that's you're going to project that out to the world and people yes. are going to say, oh, she's they're a horrible person. So thinking positive really does and, and and acting positive really does take you to positive places. Oh, I agree a hundred percent. I think I think what how we think and how we view life really exemplifies, you know, how we behave and how, you know, the amount of success we achieve in life. You know, I think if you're positive, you're really building your inner strength and you know, mm -hmm. and you're giving yourself the the courage and the wisdom to really get out there and, and really, you know, do the things that you always wanted to do. You know, I think, it, it, you know, one component plays off the other component and not even realizing it and it builds character and it builds a new whole new person within that person. It does definitely. Yeah. And, and we find what we, you know, you find what you look for and what you search for. So if you're looking for the positive things, you'll find them. And if you're looking for the ways you succeed, you're going to find those and they're just going to build more because you're, you're going to get more com comfortable with success. And like, one of the things I like to tell people to do is to celebrate your wins every day. Yeah. No matter how small, you know, it, your win could be as simple as, you know, I woke up before my alarm today. That's a yes. win. Or, mm -hmm. or I, you know, I, I, but every time you celebrate wins, your body gets more used to wins and it likes having wins and you get more and more wins and it just yes. brings more. hundred percent. Even just giving yourself a pat on the back or taking a, a, a bath with Epsom salt to reward yourself. You know, those little mm -hmm. things mean a lot, you know, they're incentives, they're incentives yes. to make you want to, you know, achieve those goals, you know, and, and feel good about yourself. Cause you just like every, just like a little kid, if you reward them with something, when they do something good, 
they're bound to do something good again, you know, and, and grownups are the same way. You know, we just sometimes don't realize that, but we are, you know, and uh, right. it, yeah, it, it's really important. I think, you know, how we treat ourselves and even, you know, what's your t intake about when you talk about mindset, what about the people you hang around with? You know, how do you feel about, you know, if you're trying to improve your life and you're trying to make yourself a better person and get unstuck, you know, how important is it to, you know, look around you and see who your friends are and who the people around you are? It's very important because the, you know, the first thing one, is, and then which I've learned in my book and which I share with everyone is you can't do it alone. No yeah. one can do anything alone and you have to be willing to ask for help and you have to surround yourself by pe with people who are willing to give you help and there are so many people out there. So you definitely, um, you know, need to have supportive people around you and you need yeah. to, you know, make sure that the people around you are willing to, are willing to support you. And if they're not, you know, maybe they give them a chance to change, explain what they're doing. But uh, there's a, um, a quote by, I think the actor, was it, um, Brian Tyree Henry, I believe said that, you know, you have, um, if the people around you, are not supporting you, then you don't have a supportive circle. You have a cage. Yeah. And I, I love yeah. that quote because it's really, because sometimes, you know, you know, sometimes you may find that there are people in your life that you do have to let go or, yeah, and, and often they they'll come back. I mean, that's what I found. You know, if you change yourself, sometimes just by changing yourself and just by, you know, working on yourself, mm -hmm. the people around you will actually change. Yeah. And they may come in and be more supportive when they weren't before. I know I found that in my life where, you know, by changing the way I've behaved, I've gotten better relationships, better relationship with my husband and my son, just because of who, how I changed. Right. But, but I also, I have, you know, some friends who probably served me well at one point, but I, I don't really keep it. You know, I, I haven't actively cut them out of my life, but I don't spend time with them very often. I don't cut them off because they were just always, always in a negative mindset, always kind of, you know, they weren't really getting me where I wanted to be and that, and they weren't really supporting me. They were more trying to bring me down to their level. So, yeah. And I, I don't even think people sometimes realize that they're doing that, but if you're around a negative person, I don't, you know, you could be with that person for a little while and then you feel like the energy, you know, like a vacuum cleaner, like they suck the mm -hmm. old positive energy yeah, out of definitely. you definitely draining they're like sucking that energy away yeah and it's it's hard to be that so surround your if you surround yourself with positive people I mean you know I believe in the law of attraction where mm -hmm. the more positive you are the more positive people you attach the more successful you'll attract successful people and yeah. you just build on it oh for sure definitely definitely I, I love I love your your mindset and how you you think and I think it's really productive because I think I think people really have to have that type of mindset in order to succeed and and to survive in life you know you have to really you know focus on the positive and and not dwell into the negative and and be able to you know realize too that the past is the past we can't change the past and mm -hmm. you know we have to live in the present and you know focus on the present so what are we going to do now to make you know today a better day you know and what are we going to do yeah. if we want to make you know the next three months or the next six months even better you know and and creating that mindset and i think planning you know like you mentioned journal and you know you could really start to really you know plan out that that positive mindset and that positive life that you've always dreamt upon. What do you, yeah, I, it's definitely possible. And I, like I said, I think you can definitely plan it and, you know, and it doesn't mean, you know, sometimes people say, well, you know, Oh, nothing bad happens to this person. And, and, and really being positive has nothing to do with the bad things that happen to you. Right. Some of the most positive people have had the most horrible experiences. Yeah. And it's just the way you see things. Cause they're, you know, cause you're, there's so much around you that you can look at. If you look for all the negative, you can find it, but you, you can find something positive in, in the most horrible situation if you look for it. And if you focus on that, that helps you move forward. That helps you get unstuck. Yeah. It helps you go do things that, you know, are amazing because you know, it's possible because you've learned, you know, even in the, the most horrible situation there, there's some light and there's some positivity and there's something to, to really, learn from that experience. And those are the people who have, you know, overcome the most 
horrible things and, and right. yet gone out there and done amazing things because they focused on the positive and they focused on what they could learn from that situation and, and how they could take that negative situation and use it to grow. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now you, you just completed a book. I know the ebook is out and you have the other book is your, your paperback is getting ready to launch. Now tell me a little about the book. Like first, what inspired you to write the book? You know, I, oh, I always wanted to write a book. I've always loved to write. And I always told myself someday I'm going to write a book someday, you know, put it off to someday. I have one of those someday lists. Mm -hmm. And when I lost the job most recently, and I said, I'm, I'm not going to just find another job. I'm going to look at what I really want to do. One of the things I said, well, I always wanted to write a book. And now I have time, a little bit of time. So I'm going to write a book. Yeah. So I, I worked with a company that helps you, you know, provides editors and helps you to take you through the process. And I wasn't sure what I was going to write about at first. I mean, I had right. a folder full of stories and posts that I had made on LinkedIn that I saved and just, you know, interesting stories. Right. Topics that I like to talk about. Mm -hmm. like even before the book, I was very into the positivity and talking about and in, in thinking about, it, I just realized that the idea of reinvention, that I had just reinvented myself from being a chemical engineer to doing something completely different, becoming an author. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started thinking about people I knew. I was actually at a 5K for charity where I met the woman who, over, who I mentioned earlier, who had the MS and, and learned about her. And then I thought, you know, I know a lot of other people who have had horrible things talked happened to them and yet they've turned around and started a nonprofit or become, you know, started a company or just done things that are so amazing. Let me see if I can interview some of them. So I started interviewing these people. And yeah. what I found was a lot of what they had said they had in common. So that was how I started the book, I, the reinvention mindset that a lot of what things in their mindset that enabled them to, you know, overcome this tragedy and reinvent themselves they all said the same thing, even though they had different tragedies and different parts of their life and different areas. So I kind of said, oh, looked at the whole process and said, well, if if you could use these these ideas, these tools to reinvent yourself after something horrible, then why can't you use them to just reinvent yourself because you're not happy where you are and, right. and there's no reason. So that's kind of what I put the story of the book is that you know, these are some things you can do to help reinvent yourself. And I, and it's a very conversational book. It's, it's a lot of stories. There's, you know, there's funny parts, there's sad parts. It's not like a self-help book where you're going to be taking notes and sitting there. It's, it's more right. an entertaining read, but it, but it'll give you ideas that if you look at them, will definitely start you on yeah. a way to live a life that's more fulfilling, more joyful, just a, a happier life that you'll probably feel much more satisfied with. Now, what are some tools that you find like one or two tools that you find very powerful? You know, we've talked about some things in the beginning of the, of the conversation, but some things maybe people could do at home that you find are very powerful when it comes to reinventing your mindset. Okay. Yeah. One of the things, you know, you have to really do is, is face your fears. Mm -hmm. I mean, fears are very important in getting over the, the reinvention mindset. And I think yeah. at home, um, you know, look, make a list of your fears, look at them all mm -hmm. and then try to figure out what the purpose of your fear is because fears are not, we're not supposed to live in fear. No fear is supposed to be a warning. Like, you yeah. know, like if you put your hand on a hot stove and you feel hot, you lift your hand up. Exactly. And that's what fear is. Fear is supposed to be, okay, there's something dangerous here. Do something about it and then move on. Right. But we end up stuck in these fears where we're not just thinking of the warning then we're living in them. Yeah. And so when you think of all your fears and you make a list of them and then you go through them one at, one at a time and you say, okay, I'm afraid of this. What is this trying to tell me? Yeah. Why am I afraid of it? What, you know, if what will happen if I stay this way, what if I face it? And you kind of go through the whole process and that lets you basically overcome the fear because you realize like, okay, well, what, what's the worst thing that could happen? Yeah. And then what's the best thing that could happen and how right. do I direct myself there? 
Um, so that's one thing that's really good. And the other thing I, I think I share in my book, I share my playlist because I think music, I mean, music has shown to have positive effects on your your brain, your body, your stress level. Oh, 100%. And I think just having songs, whether you the playlist I share or any, um, it's like the playlist I give away is part of my giveaway too, but it's just listen to music that that lifts you up, that gets you going because music and motion, getting moving, walking, listening to music, dancing, all of that just brings so much positivity to your life. It makes yeah. you happy. And and when you smile, it things just happen easier. So getting yeah. getting that. So, you know, if you don't listen to music very often, try to, you know, find some songs, look at some motivational things or look at what everybody had their own taste, but there are definitely songs that can uplift you and, and, and listening to them, having those is on a bad day, you know, put in that, go if you're feeling bad, put in some music and dance and, yeah. and I guarantee you'll feel better. I agree. I, I, you know, when I put music on, I, it kind of changes my whole momentum, my thoughts, my, the way I feel, you know, even, even if I'm, if I'm looking to really get in touch with my emotions and I'm, you know, I want to, I'm, I'm, or I'm writing a piece that I really need to focus on, you know, how this event made me feel. If I put music on sometimes like the words will just flow through my head and it just, it just makes me feel a connection, you know, and, and uh, so music is very powerful and, you know, just like sound, sound therapy is very powerful. The way the mind takes in music or the mind takes in sounds really can affect the, the, the mind, the body and, and the, and the spirit as well. So, yeah, I think that's a great idea that, that you mentioned. I think it's a really great idea. Now, when is your, your paperback book is supposed to be coming out soon? When is it supposed to be coming out? Right. The paperback book will be available on Amazon June 1st. Um, I have copies. <laughs> I have copies here, so I'll give you my email if you want an autographed copy sooner. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to set, sign one and send it over. This is my book. and um, But the, the paperback will avail be available June 1st. Um, the ebook is on Amazon right now. I'm trying to start like a promotion sale, but I'm working with them on the details. But you can get it right now. Um, just look up The Reinvention Mindset, Lori McDowell. And um, like I said, I, I can, if someone wants a paperback before June 1st, I'm happy to send them an autograph copy and they can sell me or somehow we can figure that out. So mm -hmm. um, I can be reached, you know, I, I don't know if you want my contact, but you can just email me yes. at lmcdowell at reimagine and then you, the letter U, that dot, dot net. So lmcdowell at reimagine you dot net, please, if you're have questions about the book or anything, feel free to email me. I'm always checking email on a regular basis. So. <laughs> I love it. And what kind of services do you provide also? Sure. Yeah. The company that I, I founded is called Reimagine You Strategies. And what we provide, we, we do um, training and coaching. So the training we do is anywhere. We can do corporate training. We can do training for groups. Um, and I have an online training class. So anywhere from a couple hours to the online training classes, eight modules of an hour each. So I offer training and then I offer coaching. We offer coaching services, both one-on-one. Um, -on -one. We have a breakthrough coaching, which is basically three to four, three hour sessions of one-on-one, -on -one, which takes you through a whole process of breakthrough. So it really will help. It'll change your life doing that. And then I have group coaching programs, both a um, an eight week group coaching session and a um, six month group coaching. And then I also do just hourly one on one. The other thing between besides the training and the coaching is I love to speak at events. I will speak at live live events are my favorite. So I would love to be live anywhere U.S. and Canada and maybe even other places in the world if I have the opportunity, but I'm, I'm available for speaking, um, keynote speeches, inspirational, motivational, um, storytelling. I speak at church groups sometimes. So any mm -hmm. uh, kind of speaking. And I also can speak um, both the coaching and the training and the speaking are all virtual as well. So I live in Texas, but you don't have to be near Texas. I can do them all virtually. That's wonderful. 
And if you had to take today, what would be a couple of things you'd like to emphasize about today's conversation that you feel you want the listeners to understand? I guess the first thing I'd like is really just to know that, you know, you, everything we need to succeed, to, to reinvent ourselves, to be happy, we have, we already have, we have access to it inside of ourselves and we just need to find it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that doesn't mean that there's not ha there's not negativity. It doesn't mean you still don't have bad things in your life, but you can find out how to get by them inside of you. Yeah. Um, I would focus on, like I said, face your fears, figure out what they are and don't let them hold you back. Positive self-talk, especially, you know, talking about what you want and, and even talking as if you already have it, as opposed to talking about what you don't want or what you don't have. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. This has been great. Thank you so much, Lori, for coming on the show. I, I really enjoyed having you on the show. I hope you can come back and we can talk some more. And uh, I think it's very important that people learn to, you know, that, that they don't have to settle, that they can reinvent themselves, that they don't have to be stuck in a life that they don't feel happy in. And that it's so important to have a healthy, happy, and productive life. And I'm so happy that you're out there teaching people how to reinvent themselves. So they, they learn that, you know, that they don't have to be stuck in life, that they could be whoever they, they want to be. So thank you so much for all the stuff that you do. Oh, you're welcome, Stacy. Yeah. And I do want to share too, I do have a free giveaway or gift. If you go to um, reimagine you, it, or it's actually, it's joy dot reimagine you dot net backslash free mm -hmm. it'll get you my free gift you'll get a um what they call it the reinvention mindset bingo card at first which is just a bingo card that has little things you can do like give someone a hug or say thank you things you can do every day to help you re start on that positive path and then you will also get um my playlist I'm on Spotify if you want my inspirational playlist. And then it will invite you to a master class as well, which is the master class. We kind of go through the whole process. We talk about things that are sabotaging you. So it, it's a great, you know, 90 minute class that can kind of fill you, give you a little bit more details on how to get started. So it's joy.reimagineyou.net backslash free. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. This has been amazing. I really, I really enjoyed having you on. Thank you. And I, I thank hope you. To have I you enjoyed on soon. it. Yes. All right. Sounds good, Stacy. Thank you. You're welcome. You have a great day. You too.